Okay. We're in Perak Nun, chapter 50, and it's a brief Perak. And the words of the Perak actually has a number of different themes. The basic theme of the Perak is that God is prepared to save us, to redeem us. And one of the problems, though, that stands in the way is we're not always prepared to follow his lead. And so the Novi starts out in a very strong language. And he says, Kormar Hashem, that this is what Hashem says, Eza Sefer Kritut Ibchem Asher Shalachtim. Where is that divorce document that I sent to your mother? Omim and Oshai Asher Macharti and Chemlo. Or which of the people who are trying to, your creditors, have I turned you over to? In other words, what the, the Nabi is saying here is a very simple point. I never let you go. I never forsake, for, forsake you. I, I always was with you throughout the entire time. And as a result of that, why do you think I left you alone? There's no nothing. You've always been with me throughout and we'll go through this in a little more detail in a minute. It's because of your sins that you were sold off or given off to the enemy. Or it's your own sins that your mother was sent away. Now, the the question, the obvious question within these psukim, within this first passage, is who's actually being addressed here? So the simple understanding the pshat is that this is being addressed to the Knesset Yisrael. The Knesset Yisrael is the Jewish people themselves. A Knesset is a feminine form. Part of the reason we're talking about imchem throughout all of this, it's very simply that we're saying, Jewish people, I've, you're always still, you're still connected with me. You're still part of me. According to the Sforno, the Sforno says that this is just a very opening, simple opening statement to the Jewish people. You're all you're off base. Where did you get this idea that I have forsaken you? Where did this all come from? It isn't from me. Interestingly, the Mahari Kras says no, that this statement is actually addressed more to the nations of the world, where God is saying that the Jewish people are mine still. Don't think that even though they may be in Galut, even though they may be persecuted, that you have control. God says, I'm still with them. Or as the Shadal says, I have never hated them, like you would have, unfortunately, in the case of a divorce. And I have never despised them, where you talk about Va'aretz Takiotam, that they should have been thrown off of the land. It was their choice throughout. The, their choices, their bad choices, that ultimately made it a situation where I was sold off. Or first points out one other piece, this idea of the creditor, what is being added when we talk about the creditor, that, you know, did I sell you off to the creditor? In the olden days, if a person owed a lot of money, okay, they, you know, debtor jails, a child would be given over as an apprentice or something like that. That's the concept here, that this is the most extreme of circumstances, that when we're talking about this, you can't imagine somebody, if someone said yeah. and sold off as a child, it's something like you can't imagine you're ever going to be able to get out of. HaKadosh Baruch said that's never happened. Whatever has occurred here is something that you can resolve. And you can take care of it. And that's why it ends off. It's your own sins. If you stop sinning like that, things will work out. And not just that, madua bati ve'en ish. The Navi says, wait a second. It's not that you've been sold off and I've forgotten about you. I came and no one was there to greet me. No one was there. Now, here, the, and the Ibn Ezra says, this is referring to the various Nevi'im, the various prophets that HaKadosh Baruch Hu was sent to the Jewish people and telling those the Jewish people, I sent you all these prophets. You never listened to them. How come no one ever listened to them? According to Rav Schwab, this is even a, a stronger piece. He's talking to the Jews in the Southern Kingdom. And the Jews of the Southern Kingdom, he said, I went ahead, I sent you this message. What was the message? I exiled the 10 tribes. They were punished. You saw that punishment and you never paid any attention to it. You're the ones, okay, who are, I was ready to redeem you. 
but you didn't you didn't come up. The Radak says it's you. You're the ones who are holding off the redemption. Karati ve'enone. I've called out. You never responded. Hakatsor katsra yadimi. Do you think? Says Rabbi Victor Balgansi. Do you think that there's any chance that I can't re redeem you? You've seen the redemption in the past. Do you think I don't have the power to do so? With my shout, I've been able to dry out the sea. Asim neharot midbar. I can make rivers go dry. Tivash dagatam me'en mayim. The fish begin to spoil because they're out of the water. Vitamot betzama, and they die because they're thirsty. Now, when I start talking about drying out sea, obviously there's an image that's being come here. Where do we have the drying out of sea? The, the Amsu. The, the Exodus from Egypt. The Exodus. So God says to the Jewish people, You really don't think I can do this? You remember back there, you know, Charlton Heston was leading you through this, the, the split sea. It was all dry. You remember that? When you remember that, how can you possibly think I can't do it again? Yeah. It says the A B Koch as opposed to the A B Koch. Is there a reason why? We no, no, the B is, is within me or to versus to me. It's not a, it, it's both, it's just a, a stylistic piece. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, all the time because a lot of the water bodies in Israel are very dry. Like when the Jews cross. Well, right. So what you can do, there's two different ways, there's two different levels on which to, to explain this. The simplest one is really we're talking about this whole idea of we're, we're bringing up this imagery. The Jews remember the ultimate redemption we've experienced was not the redemption of Cyrus. The ultimate redemption was the redemption of the Exodus. We came out of Egypt. And that showed the absolute power of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And so by using that imagery over and over again of Kriyat Yamsuf, of Exodus, we keep on saying God has the power to do these kinds of things. Don't doubt it. You experience it in your history. It is interesting that Dr. Mikra does say, by the way, that while the natural association with this is Kriyat Yamsuf, is the splitting of the sea, there is a possibility that we also talk about just natural disasters that occur in this world. God, the power is there. Don't think the power isn't there at all. And so as a result of this, God says, I have that power. Albish shamayim kadrut, I will clothe the heavens in darkness. According to Rashi, Rashi takes a midrashic approach. Rashi says that at the time of the Geula, every nation has its own ministering angel. We talk about the Saro Shel Esav. Esav has his angel in the heavens, whatever these things mean. HaKodesh Borcho, according to Rashi, what he's going to do at the time of the ultimate Geula, he is going to darken the path of all of those ministering angels. The heavens will be darkened, meaning they're not going to be able to have the power to impact or to stop the salvation itself. The Radak says, wait a second, we're on this theme of, of the Exodus. So if we're on the theme of the Exodus, what's God going to do? It's the Makat Choshev he's referring to. God says, just like at the time of the Exodus, I darkened the, the skies before the Egyptians. I can do that again. Visak Asim Kisutam, and I'm going to clothe them, or I'm going to put them in sackcloth as their garment. This is a, a parallelism between the first part of the pasuk and the end of the pasuk. First part of the pasuk talks about darkness with clouds. The second one talks about clothing them. If you think about it, also when you think of the clouds, the clouds are somewhat like sackcloth themselves. They're not. They're not solid in the same way as sackcloth is, is a, a looser weave as well, and all of those things. So it's it's just a poetic piece that's happening above and beyond, talking about God's power. Now, the next pasuk is an interesting pasuk, because and they're all interesting, uh, is a fascinating pasuk, they're all fascinating, is just a pasuk that requires a lot of consideration because 
There are two entirely different ways of looking at it. First of all, you'll notice that in Pasuk Dalid, it starts out Hashem Elohim. Pasuk Hey, it has Hashem Elohim. Pasuk Zion, Va Hashem Elohim. Okay, it has that double name of God, and then you have it again in Tet, Hey, Hashem Elohim. Okay, so we see this section in terms of referring to God, it's referring to God in all of the power. Hashem Elohim is both the Rachamim and the Din. It is that all-inclusive, the all-powerful piece of God itself. That's one thing. So we see there's like a there's a set of a number of sukim together, the set of the Hashem Elohim sukim. The second question is, who is speaking this? More modern scholars will often take the approach, and the Dath Mikra does this as well, that this is not being spoken by Yeshayahu himself, but this is being spoken by Yeshayahu's students. That this is a later piece after Yeshayahu's death. If you remember, and I'm going to go back to this, we keep on going back to this, starting from 10 prakim ago from Perak Mem, we entered into the second half of the Se of Sefer Yeshayahu. It had a different tone to it. These are the, the words of comfort and promises of, of redemption. All of this in the second half of Sefer Yeshayahu. It has some differences in language than, um, with the exception of, uh, of, of a comment by the Ibn Ezra, which we dealt with then, which is very controversial because he seems to be the only one taking the approach. Everyone says this is one unified book within our tradition. Ibn Ezra takes a little bit of a different approach with it. It's a unified book written by, say, by Yeshayahu Anavi. However, it is true that there are pieces of the book that sound like they came from the students of Yeshayahu, not Yeshayahu directly. So according to the Dat Mikram, he explains that this is one of the disciples who is conveying Yeshayahu's lessons after the fact. Huh? Natan Li. So who is the Li? Who is the me? Hashem Elohim Natan Li Lashon Limudim. God has given me the tongue of one who is taught, who is practiced, who is a student. Lee, it could be one of the disciples and not Yeshayahu speaking. It could be one of the disciples speaking. And we'll see where, where it comes from, where the, this goes. But simple explanation. The medieval commentators all say that this is Yeshayahu speaking. The, the Abar Benel starts out, God, Yeshayahu says, Hashem Elohim natan li lashon limudim, that God gave me the power to be able to speak and explain things so that everyone would understand. Ladat, laut, he goes ahead and gave me that power where I am able to, uh, to encourage at the ya'ef davar, okay, the ones who have been tired, ya'ir baboker, baboker, ya'ir lioz, and every morning God comes to me and, and says something, I hear something, lishmoa kalimudim, to hear the words like, how does he end off in the art school? How does he translate the word limudim? The eloquent, like the ones who are trained, who are well-practiced. So the question is, the limudim, this word limudim, it could mean a bunch of things. Datri Kras says limudim are disciples, the ones who are there. Radak says limudim is practice, those who have been who've practiced it. According to the Sforno, and according to the Ibn Ezra, Limudim is somebody who is well-prepared, well-educated, well-prepared, able, as I mentioned in the name of the Abarbanel, that Siri. able to explain things well. There goes Siri. Is able to explain things well. So according to this approach, what the Navi is saying, whether the Navi is Yeshayahu or one of his disciples speaking on his behalf, he's saying, I was given the power so that everyone could understand. Interesting, just total side note, only because I see Yafa is online. Laut is a very strange um, word. And according to Shadal, Laut, which means to strengthen, is actually from the Arabic and not from a Hebrew, uh, a Hebrew source. Then the Navi goes, Hashem Elohim Patach God gave me the power 
to listen. And I never resisted it. And I never step back. Now, why resist? Why step back? Because the Navi is saying, you Jews, you've been resisting everything I Baruch Hu wanted to tell you. I t- I was there. I sh- Nevi'im showed up and no one came around. I never, that was never my issue. God gave me this power. I always listened and I never went back. Another possibility of never going back when it says, Vanochi lo mariti, didn't resist. I didn't resist any of the mitzvot of Hashem. And this is despite in Pasuk Vav, Gevi natati lemakim. I gave my back to those who will hit me. Ulechayai lemortim. And I gave my cheeks to those who will pull out the hair. What's happening here? The Navi is talking about the fact that even though I've listened to God, even though I've been able to explain all the words, at the very same time, I've been beaten, I've been abused. All of these things happened. We'll see in a moment. He doesn't step away from it, but he's been beaten and abused. Now, the problem with that is nowhere in this Sefer have we seen Yeshayahu Navi being beaten and abused. And so as a result of it, the Barbanel says very simply, this would have never happened. Rather, what the Navi is saying is, for the sake of God, I would have been willing to suffer these abuses. That's what it says. Radak says, listen, it's possible that these things happen to Yeshayahu. We just don't have it anywhere in the, in the Tanakh that it happened. So it's possible, according to Rav Schwab, he takes it as pshat. The Navi says he did this. It happened. And he was abused. And he was beaten. Panai lo istarti. And nevertheless, I never hid my face. Miklimot varok. From the abuse and from the spit. People would spit at the Navi. He never, never stopped doing what he needed to do. Vashem elokim yazorli. God helped me. Okay. Rashi says, if people rose up against me, God helped me. According to Hirsch, there's an interesting piece here. Ya'azorli is not azarli. It's not past tense, it's future tense. So why is it future tense here? And according to Rav Hirsch, the Navi's walking into a situation where he has been abused and he's always felt God is at his side, but it wasn't that God was at his side. God will always be at his side. And that's why he's been able to suffer this, this kind of shame that had come across him. Hashem Elohim. Now, va Hashem Elohim, okay, in this kind of case, and Hashem Elohim, that is more of vava mechalek. It's not a and like a, a conjunctive piece, it said it's to distinguish. Almost, I would say, like, but God has helped, will help me. Uh, Art Scroll again, how does he translate it? Beginning of verse uh, seven. Yeah. What? Helps me. 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 Past tense? Shall help. Future tense. And they. No, yeah, Azorli. You have helps me? Yeah. yeah. So helps me. So what they do is with, with Art Scroll, he's taking that that yeah, Azorli as um a um as a a constant form. It's an estranged form to use here. And that's why Refersh, okay, has to say that God will help me always is the way you need to understand it. Okay. And it's because of that. That I was never disgraced. Al kein samti panai kachalamish. I put my face like a, a rock, like a flint. In other words, a chalamish is a very strong stone. Va'eda kiloivosh, and I knew that I would ultimately never be shamed. Why? He says karov matzdiki, because those people. In this case, it's referring to um, God. My um, 
uh, what's the best word for this? Vindicator. Vindicator. Okay, my vindicate. What? Cha I like champion even better. That's almost English. Okay, my champion, even though vindicator is better. You know why? Because the person who who helps me become so date to become correct. Vindicator is better, but champion is easier. But at the same time, the Shadal says Matsuki is the Sanagor, is my my defend my defense attorney, the one who is always going to make sure. I'm going to come all right out of this. Who is that? Rashi says, God is with me. Me, Ariviti, anyone who wants to fight with me, Naamda, Yachad. You guys go get together. Me, Val, Mishpati, anyone who wants to be my opponent in this judgment, anyone who wants to be part of this court case, Yigashale, bring it on. Okay. The idea is no one should be like that. Me, Arivi T says the Radak. Okay. Who, anyone wants to fight with me? What's the fight? Anyone wants to say it? My prophecies are wrong. Bring it on. Okay. The Malbin points out, by the way, the difference between a Reeve and a Mishpat. Anyone wants to fight with me, come over. Anyone who wants to go to court with me, okay, come, come bring it on like that. A Reeve is whenever you have a dispute, there are two sides. I'm going to say one thing, and the other guy is going to say something else. Okay. When it comes to a court case, it's not, in this, this case, the difference between Reeve and Mishpat, the question is, was I right or was I wrong? It's a clear law just trying to establish the facts. Whereas Reeve, there are two, you know, just two positions, and you're going to fight through it. So any kind of, of dispute, says the Navi, that I'm going to be into with you, anything you want to claim against what I say, no basis for it. Hey, Hashem Elokim, Yazorli. One more time. Hey, Nain is just a word to strengthen it. God is going, will be supporting me. Me who Yarshieni. Who's the one? Okay, who can go ahead and find me wrong? Hen kulam kabegen yivlu. All of those who are going to try to do it, they're going to be like a worn out garment. Ash yochlem, like a garment that's been eaten by a moth. In other words, anyone who is going to try, and this is the important point, the Radak makes it, okay? Me who yarshieni is not who is going to find me wrong? It says, who's going to try to find me wrong? It's not going to be. Because at the end of the day, anyone who tries to go against me is going to be destroyed. The destruction is, it's like an ash, like a moth eating away. It may not be immediately. It may be a little bit at a time. So we started out where the Navi starts talking to the Jewish people. Hey, your situation is your fault. I'm ready to save you. In fact, I've even tried and you haven't listened to me. Then we get to the point where we, the, where the Navi turns to the Jewish people and says, listen, I am confident in my words. I know how to explain it to you. I've been taught that Kodesh Baruch Hu keeps on teaching me, keeps on communicating this with me. And by the way, those of you who aren't going to listen to me, who think that I'm all wrong, that I'm crazy about all of this, just bring it on. I know I'm right. But now he's going to turn to the people towards the end in one pasuk and he's going to say to the people who are on his side Mi bachem yirei Hashem, shomea who among you the, the those who are in awe of god listen to the word to the words or to the voice of his servant that even though there are people who are opposed to me Listen, the rest of you listen to me. Asher halach chashechim. Those who have walked, who has walked, I'm saying, who has walked in darkness, vein nogalo, and there doesn't seem to be any light, yiftach b'shem Hashem v'yishaen belokav. Despite your troubles, despite all of those troubles, darkness is a sign of trouble, Rashi points it out, etc. Anyone who is looking for this just keep on trusting in God and rely on him. Now, the Ibn Ezra has an interesting point. He says, anyone who's willing to walk after God is not the one. Don't look after all the other things that are happening in the world. Just follow God. Don't try to go bigger than that. But then, and that's why I said this is a short paragraph because we're going to finish right here. He turns one more time to the people 
who have been making trouble. And the Navi says, Hen kulchem kodchei esh, you, those who are not listening to the words of the Navi, versus those who, just the previous Pesach, we said, are in awe of God, you, and the, the Mitzudat David even goes further, the reason why he uses the word kulchem, most of you who aren't listening, are like those who light the fire and who are girded with sparks. Now, what do you mean you're lighting the fire? Says the Marikra, you're getting God angry. If you're not listening, the anger of God is going to come up. And you're, I guess in modern English, you would say in the slang, you're playing with fire. If you're not listening to God, you're playing with God with fire. You're going to go into the fire that you have created. And in those sparks that you have ignited, says the Navi to them in the name of God that all of this was this decree of what's going to happen came from this unto you, tishkavun. in sorrow, you're going to lie. I've warned you, says the, the Barbanel, I have warned you. You didn't listen to my advice. And now you're going to remain in the galut because of all this. Miyadi tazot says the Mitzudat David, you need to understand this isn't by accident. This is rather a decree from God that if you continue to refuse, this will be your fate. So the Novi, in this parak, and it's a brief parak, don't worry, next week it'll be a nice long one. But in this brief parak, what the Novi is doing is he's saying, it's all in your hands. Lahavdil, elef havdalot, Boy, am I going to get in trouble for this? Okay. La Elev Abdalot, just think back to the final scene in the, the Wizard of Oz when she's ready. To, she wants to go home. And the, what was the, the 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 good witch? What was her name? Whatever it was, says, you, uh, Glenda, Glenda, you just have to click your heels together. You just have to say you want to go home. And you go home. Jewish people, you want to have a geula? You want to be redeemed? Click your heels together. Buy an LL ticket. And you can be there. It's all in your hands. If you don't do it, know what's going to happen. If you do it, I'm ready for you. And on that note, it's a great way to start the first parak after the Yom Noraim. A lot to think about. And I'll see everyone next week. Regular time, it'll be a full, a full hour of the shir because it's a long parak. Bye-bye. <laughs>